Welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a Monday here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's turn our attention uh, to the world game, but we're talking about the Parra Matildas in particular. And of course, uh, not long ago, of course, they were actually here in Melbourne uh, being part of the uh, Asia Oceania Championships. And of course, they uh, won that one uh, down here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, and we've got a very special guest, of course, joins right now. Of course, her name is Tamsin Colley. She joins us right now. Thanks, Tamsin, for joining us. Thank you. I'm honored to be on here. Yeah. Well, tell us a bit about uh, the uh, Asia Oceania Championship that uh, the Parra Matildas are uh, winning. So the um, 2023 IFCPF Asia Oceania Championships was an amazing experience. Like it was my first international football championship, but some of the other teammates had been to the World Cup last year for the Parra Matildas. Um, yeah, and. It was a great atmosphere. I was lucky enough to score a hat trick, so three goals in my first game, which is amazing. And everyone was like so supportive, and it was great being in an environment with other people with disabilities. And yeah, tell us a bit about the the hat trick in your first game. I I definitely wasn't expecting that. Like I had um just played club soccer before, but as a defender and they put me up front so I was a bit nervous about it but yeah I wasn't that familiar with the cerebral palsy game because it's modified it's like five a side rather than 11 a side which is what able-bodied people play so yeah but there's not that many opportunities to play cerebral palsy football so it's lucky that the parameters have been just invented last year to give people cerebral palsy a go. Three that you scored which one was the best one that you scored. I don't know. I I guess I'll have to say the first one because it was like a. I don't know exactly which one was like by mechanically the best, but like the feeling after scoring the first was pretty amazing because like I was just shocked. I wasn't sure I was able to do it, and yeah, it was great, and all the teammates celebrated together, so it was good. How good was it to uh, get the trophy um, after winning the championship? Yeah, it was really good. Um, yeah, we took parameters before this were ranked person in the world, so we knew we could do it, but we had to do a lot of fighting. Japan was a big competitor, but yeah, we all the girls like put everything they had into the game, and we were lucky to come out as with a win, and it was so great to um, yeah, we had that opportunity. I see you also uh, got. Uh, medals on the day so how long did you wear your medal around your neck neck for and did you sleep with it um I didn't sleep with it um some people well I don't know what everyone else does but yeah we wore it like for the rest of the day and um some people even wore the next day where we could we watch the um men's championship final which was happening in the same venue and we got photos with our medals and everything so yeah it was pretty cool. <laughs> cool was it to win it uh, at the home of the Matildas here in Melbourne? It was awesome um, I had yeah I had never been there before it's like a pretty new facility but I saw the Matildas playing on it and yeah it was awesome even being in the we got to use the Matilda's change room, which was really awesome. And seeing your name on there where um, uh, Matilda's would, name would have been normally, which was really cool. And then, like, yeah, the turf was great and it was just a great place for playing football. Just going back to the medal, did you bite on your medal? And if so, was it real gold? I didn't bite on it, I pretended to. <laughs> but... Other people might have been. I'm pretty sure it was real gone. <laughs> <laughs> the trophy, um, I'm assuming you got a chance to hold the trophy. Um, I have to ask as a follow-up um, to that then, did you kiss on the trophy? No, I didn't, but I did get to hold it, which was cool. Like, we all passed this around, but... And then I think some people kiss it, but I'm usually a very clean person, so I don't like kissing trophies. Oh, okay. <laughs> but tell us a bit about the team and how special was to be part of the Para Matildas uh, a couple, uh, maybe it was a month ago now. Yeah, it's a great group of girls who are very close and we had been in 
like training camps before and some of the um girls I'd known from previously when I used to do power athletics with some of them man we like kind of um went over to see people build when it was created um so yeah that was really cool and they're like um very supportive of each other we like and we understand each other's struggles and like lift each other up so I really enjoyed it yeah What's the next event or games or competition that you're going to be involved in? The next big tournament for the Paramatildas is the World Cup next year. I think it's in November, but to be confirmed, and then so, um, yeah, the Paramatildas will be involved in it. I'm not quite sure if I'll be because you know you need to. It's getting announced closer to the time. Yeah, but I'm definitely aiming for that, and then I'm still like. Um, because I used to do power athletics, so I'm still like improve my times for that, and maybe in the future getting to represent Australia in either sport. I'm glad you mentioned about uh, your other sport that uh, you're involved in, which I was just about to mention. Now, you're the youngest ever Aussie in track and field uh, Paralympian. How? What does that mean to you? It means a lot. Like I. Yeah, I still, um, there was a few years after the Paralympics that I, like, couldn't believe it and was refusing to call myself a Paralympian because, yeah, it's amazing to be able to have that opportunity so long. I was, um, like, when the Russians got excluded from the Paralympics a few weeks before the Games, I got a late call up, so I had to, yeah, fly over and it was all quite rough, so I didn't have much time for it to process it, but... Yeah, it was amazing in the world and competing against people like three times my age <laughs> and being against um in the village with people of all types of disabilities. Like I hadn't experienced that much before. Um so yeah, it was great. <laughs> now you mentioned um about the Power Matilda's um I guess games coming up, but for you, I'm assuming you've got track and field events coming up as well and competitions coming up. Um, what's what's next on that schedule? Like the um track season is just about to start, like um later this year and early next year. There's like the nationals domestically, the yeah, there's obviously the past Paralympics, which like I'll be supporting and stuff, but I'm yeah, the qualifiers for me are quite tough, so I will need to improve quite a bit to get there but yeah I'm just happy to support power support in any way I can. <laughs> Talk a bit about uh, your world game journey first um, where did it all start and why did you choose the the world game of football? Yeah good question I so when I was getting involved in sport I well at first I went to a pathetics come and try day and then a few years later I found a disability football club which I played in um except it wasn't like specifically catered to people separate body back then so um yeah there was a bit of a ability difference between people who didn't have any physical impairments and me so I decided to continue athletics for a while and then only got back into CP football really competitively this year when yeah when separate body football was invented for girls because Previously, only for men there was opportunities, but now that for women too, which is really great. Yeah, so it was this year, basically earlier this year, I got invited to my first camp and like some of my people who I trained with in my power athletic squad are involved in the sport too. So I got to get advice and go through pathways that way. So yeah, it's been a um, very last year, but a very good one. <laughs> Same question, but about your track and field. How did that all start? Yeah, as as I mentioned, yeah, I went to a path athletics come and try day. It was in 2008, so when I was like six, my because my parents, my mum's a physio by background, so she was like always looking for ways to keep me active and improve my rehab from a brain tumor I had when I was a baby. Um and it was removed back then, but left me with coordination problems and stuff. So yeah, um, and then I went to that come and try day, and they, I think they like thought I was pretty okay as sports, and then 
recommended me Qigong and I went through the school system and that and then we found a paraphletic training squad which I still train with said Book Mills in New South Wales with Mad Rollings and yeah so um it went from there it pretty quickly improved in the late up to Rio like I wasn't expecting to go so I got flat into it all and then I was lucky enough to get in a few international comps since then but yeah recently the qualifiers have been getting a bit tough but I'm still trying. So staying on track and field what's your personal best time in your favorite event? My favorite event is the 200 meters T36 my PB is 31.77. And of course, tell us a bit about your track and field coaches before we talk about your parallel Matilda's coach. My track and field coach, Madge Rawlings, I've been with them for like over 10 years now. Um, Yeah, and it's been great. He's uh, like advocate for inclusion and stuff, like other outsider sport as well. He works for a disability care organisation. Um, Yeah, so it's been great he's very supportive of like all his athletes and he's grown with me along the way and then seeing the athletic squad grow like I'm basically one of the ones who has been there all along and there's like about 20 or so new people who's come along so it's great seeing every all the new athletes having a go and yeah being able to go on that journey with them <laughs> And Marcel, uh, following on from that question, tell us a bit about your amazing Para Matildas coaches. Yeah, they're they're really good. Like I had a few. Well, I had my soccer coach like in my club, but my Para Matildas coach on the next level, Kelly and Charlotte. Um, yeah, they're really good. They're like as well as that, they're really supportive. They were. Um, Kelly coached at Canberra United before the all of his team there, so they had experience with the disability sector, and yeah, um, they encouraged all the different girls. They have given me, I've learned a lot from them in the short time I've been with them, and yeah, it was great to go all the way with them. <laughs> what position do you play on the football field? And if you had a preferred position, we would love to convince your coaches to put you where that be. That's a hard question because I, well, yeah, as I mentioned, I haven't played CP football that much because I, um, like, there's not much opportunity. So in club football, I play left defender because I'm left-footed and I'm, like, use my running skills for that. But then at the Parish Cup, they put me up round, which was a uh, shark, but I... Obviously, it did quite well there. So, yeah, I'm keen to um find out in the future with more experience playing seafood football what position will actually be better for me. What does the world game of football mean to you? And then the very similar question, but about track and field. Football to me means, yeah, a lot, both sports and a lot, but first football. Um, so, yeah, I've been following it for a while and especially the buzz obviously this year of the Women's World Cup. I was following that closely and got to go to a few games live, which was awesome. Um, Everyone thinks I got into football after that, but I didn't. It was, <laughs> but yeah, it just was a cool coincidence that it yeah, was around the same time. Um, Yeah, and then um, I already knew about the men's CP football team for a while, the Paros, which was, I thought it was really cool, the opportunities for people CP to play football and thought there should be a women's CP football team. And then when it was invented last year, I was so excited to have a go. And then, um, yeah, seeing the difference it has on other people's lives and now my own, it's like really cool. And yeah, football, like being able to like achieve something you dream of and work towards it to just give you a really feeling of fulfillment. Yeah, so track and field. Um the last bit for track and field is the same. So working towards something you would always dream of, which is like for me before it was like the Paralympics and stuff. Um yeah, but then it's 
awesome also for athletics because there's all like the different classification system you may be aware there's like I don't know 40 or 50 different classification systems and then um for each different disability classification and then in Australia there's like a um baseline point score system where you get ranked according to your performance of your baseline so so you're an inclusive to let people of all disabilities compete together and then yeah um I have like football I've always supported athletics well I've been involved for it longer but yeah I got to see the um like people I look up to go to the highest level and like get inspired by them and I was really yeah grateful for all the opportunities I've had in that for what you do um playing the world game football and track and field with a disability or uh, cerebral palsy as you mentioned but also you have autism as well explain to our listeners out there who haven't experienced this what is it like for you um to go through that and still do what you do at a high level yeah it's it can be really hard at times but um well I've been living with both my disabilities for my whole life. I like, um, because some people may have like an accident and acquired their disabilities later, but I was born with mine. So I've never known any difference for her to adjust to the other reality. Um, yeah, but yeah, it can be hard at times and frustrating, like when you're trying to like compete with other people or like, yeah, keep up with them and your disabilities prevent you and then, yeah, with cerebral palsy, because it can cause, like, um, well, for me, sometimes it causes pain because my um, body parts don't, like, cooperate. And then, um, it, like, in the Paralympics, I, because my legs couldn't keep up with how fast I wanted to go, basically, so I fell over, which was really disappointing. Um, yeah, and then with autism also, it's... Um, very overwhelming and um loud environments and stuff because you can have a lot of sensory sensitive sensory sensitivities which I have um yeah but like since I got my diagnosis I've been able to like manage them and like one sensory aids or headphones when I can to reduce the impact of it you know as I said you're an amazing athlete not just um, like especially on the field, but especially how you're managing these two um, disabilities. Um, and I admire what you do, and I, I'm so sorry that I have you on the show. My question I'm going to ask as a follow-up is, what would be your advice to people out there who have these sort of disabilities, who their dreams to hopefully become, you know, a Paralympian or even, you know, representing Australia in other sports? What would be your advice to them? Because then you've you know, you're living that right now. Yeah, that's a really important thing. And I'm passionate about, like, helping other people with disabilities get involved in sports. Like, in 2017, I organised a Paraphletics Come Friday with my school for that reason. Um, Yeah, so people with disabilities who would like to get involved in sport, my advice would just be to have a go at it and you can, like, find this there's an increasing number now, still not as much as like able body, obviously, but there's a good number of disability clubs and stuff for you to be able to play sport, like at a both local level and there's pathways like especially athletics, for an example, they're really good at it. There's power events in most competitions now. Um, yeah, so my advice would just be to have a go. And then I got involved in a power athletics come and try they like Paralympics Australia now holds them like around the country. So you could like go to one of them and find your sport because it's really important to like also find something you enjoy, not just because you have to do it. Um yeah, so find something you enjoy. It gives so many benefits like physical, social and mental. Um, yeah, it has changed my life and a lot of other people. So, yeah, just go for it. So, obviously, you go out to um, these events, uh, which obviously is part of the Australian Paralympian um, uh, thing um, and events. 
Is there one thing that you t- um, that someone's come to you that inspires you to keep going? Yeah, the pa- I was involved in the event Pan Picks with Sarah that they had it recently, but I was yeah already involved in sport. But then the main thing like that inspires me to keep going is when other people like um sometimes through those common try days or like even through athletics I've had a pe- few people come up to me saying um how I've inspired them to um like be resilient and never give up. Um so yeah that inspire that inspires me to keep going and like keep um pursuing these pathways of sport for the positive representation it can give and like motivation to other young kids who just want to have a go sport and with a disability nothing can stop them let's finish off with a couple of light-hearted questions about your parent matilda's team who's the comedian the best singer and into their tiktok slash be real the i'll say for the comedian um caitlin smith she's she was the co-captain in the parent cup and very um yeah, funny makes like all the team laugh and brings them up when they're down. Um, the best singer. Well, we all have to have a pausey, so we're not that good singers. But oh. if I had to choose one, I'll choose Eloise Northam. Um, yeah, but everyone's okay at singing, I guess. <laughs> um, but not like professional poetry, yeah. Like in the bus on the way home from the matches, we were all like singing along just for fun. So it was hard to hear like specifically who was the best. But <laughs> <laughs> definitely Karina Gregorian. She's into her TikToks. Um, yeah, it's really um humorous to all the team, and sometimes we got involved in them at camps. <laughs> Do you have a pre-game superstition or ritual in either sport? Sort of. I'm not, like, very superstitious, but I do, like, routines and stuff. So, like, now before competing, like, most times I have at least a banana or um, pre-competition snack. Um, And in athletics, when I do it, I always do, like, jumps before the blocks as you see some athletes do and like shake my legs put them into the blocks the same way each time um yeah and it's really good they always have the same warm-up and like specific stretches i do for football too we'll finish with this two-part question um do you did you have a pump-up song or did the team have a pump-up song before a game the team won i would say who won the world girls um yeah we listened to that a few times before the event we had a playlist of songs we like would play on your page basically but that was one of the ones like everyone was singing along to and feeling really like girl won the world after it <laughs> yeah. yeah my personal pump up song i would say there is um believer or whatever it takes by imagine dragons because it's very um motivating and like uplifting to listen to before competition for anyone that should follow your amazing journey um so far um on social media how can they go about following you especially on insta yeah i would say because on instagram i um post a fair bit about like disability awareness and my supporting journey so my um head was at tams collie tams and collie it's my name um yeah, so if anyone wants to follow my journey, it's through that. Well, Tanzan, it's been an absolute honour to have you on the show. Um, you know, for the especially for what you have um, in uh, the two major ones, which is cerebral palsy and, of course, autism, you do you are an inspiration to everyone. So, congratulations on your achievements so far. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more to go. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see you uh, represent Australia again uh, in the Para Matildas, but also hopefully see you on the track and field, hopefully at the next Paralympic Games in Paris uh, next year. Thank you. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> Thanks. It was great having this chat.
No worries. And as uh, Tams and Collie there join us, of course, uh, uh, the Paralympian as well as part of the Paramatildas uh, Championship team uh, who won the, uh, of course, the Australian uh, Oceania uh, Championships here in Melbourne uh, last month. There's more on the Smash Sport Show right after this. Don't go away here on the 20th Celebration.